Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Craig and today we are back out in my tropical style garden. But today I'm using the word tropical very, very loosely. It is freezing. And it's actually the coldest temperature that my garden has ever experienced in the time we've been here. Minus 5.2. And it's been below freezing, icy cold for 10 days straight. The ice in the water feature has not melted. So it's going to be the harshest conditions the plants in my tropical style garden have felt. But it's not all stress and heartache. At this time of year, there is so much to learn. You can see which plants are shrugging off the cold, which ones freeze solid and then thaw out and just bounce back. But also which plants uh, don't cope with the cold and which lessons you're gonna learn um, for extra protection next year. It's not all stress. And I've actually found a few more warmer microclimates in my garden. So since the evergreen shrubs and everything that's bigger, um, has become more established. There are little pockets, little frost-free pockets in my garden that I didn't know about until now. I needed a damaging frost to show me where they were. And next growing season, I can plant those more tender plants there and they'll have a better chance of surviving. Let me show you around. So let's start with the banana plants. I leave mine out unprotected. And as I say, I recently put up a video saying that we don't get anything worse than minus two in my garden. Boy, was I wrong. The weather is so unpredictable in this new climatic period. But this banana is just made up of one massive pseudo stem. And it's called a pseudo stem because it's made up of all herbaceous material, which makes it super susceptible to cold weather. So you can see there's some damage here. If I just peel back slightly, you can see the next layer inside is solid and absolutely fine. So that's promising. This Musa Basdu has taken minus 5.2 degrees. Now, obviously, all of the fronds at the top are completely frosted off. And I don't cut them back, I don't wrap mine. I just let the fronds lay around the stem like this and it will provide a slightly warmer microclimate here. Now, something else that I think has helped is the fact that I have a fence backing onto it. So it's a nice hard surface, which as you can see, warms in the winter sun and evergreen shrubs planted all around it. So right down at the base of the plant, where there's actually pups, it's a little bit more protected. And this is what it's all about. This is why I bang on about microclimates so much. If you can find spots where there are frost pockets in your garden, or you can plan to provide a bit of extra, extra protection with other plants, the chance of your plants surviving winter with minimal effort from you as the gardener is going to improve. So this is one at Musa Basdu. I've actually got another on the other side of the garden, so I'll show you that. Here we go. Here is the other Musa Basdu hardy banana. And you can see right up until this first frost, it was pushing out leaves all the way through to December. But this harsh frost has killed off that new growth. And just as with the one on the other side, I'm letting all of this frosted material hang down and protect the stem of the plant. Um, and you can see that I've utilised the same techniques for improving the microclimate here. I have an evergreen shrub that will wrap itself around this soft herbaceous stem and then a fence panel that is going to warm in this winter sun. And it's just going to help keep the temperature here a little bit higher. It's not all good news. This is my giant European chain fern, Woodwardia radicans. And although it is quite cold tolerant, it has not got through the frost unscathed all of those lovely green leaves have browned off. Um, I do hope that down inside the heart of the fern will reshoot in spring and I can just cut off this damaged growth. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as it is because as I say, all of this herbaceous material is just an extra layer of protection in the soil. We don't want the frost to penetrate too deeply into the soil because then it will start damaging roots. This one's interesting. This is a Bilbergia bromeliad. Bilbergia nusens, I believe, and it's clumping out nicely. It produced a flower, and I left this one out as an experiment because I have backup plants in the greenhouse. Now look, these tough, waxy, thick leaves seem to have shrugged off the cold really, really well. And it's growing in a pot, so the roots are actually quite exposed. Now I'm gonna leave this one out all winter long, and we will see how it continues to tolerate the cold weather in my tropical style garden. Here's another plant that I recently spoke about being hardy and evergreen in mild winters. Typical that after I say that, we do not have a mild winter. But even so, with the temperatures 
that we've been experiencing, the leaves aren't completely toast. They are just about remaining so far in leaf. Now you can see the plant itself as a whole is very, very stressed, but it's okay. Plants that lignify, which is the posh word for the stems going woody, try and get the camera in here. So these are just starting to go woody. These lignified stems or lignified cells are much more cold tolerant. And that's why, as a tip, when you buy a shrub and it can be sold as hardy, say something like a Schefflera, when they're small, they're actually very, very tender because it's all herbaceous material. But as they become established, that woody material makes them much tougher and much more resilient to cold weather. I think this one, I'm going to leave it as it is, and then come spring when the weather warms, I will cut back the shoots down here to get a much nicer shape and to lose all of this damaged material. Um, I leave it till spring because when you cut it back, you're encouraging regrowth and I don't want any regrowth to occur before any risk of frost has passed. And as we're only in kind of the middle of December when I'm filming this, it's far, far too early. This one has really, really surprised me. I've shown you this before. It's often sold as a house plant. It's Saxifraga stellonifera, and it's forming a really nice evergreen carpet. And underneath this evergreen shrub, it seems to have escaped the worst of the frost, which is incredible because this is such a nice leaf to use as ground cover, and it flowers beautifully in spring and summer as well. Something else that surprised me is not only the fact that the Brunera has remained evergreen in these temperatures, but down here I have a Clematis that is trying to flower, and the flower seems to have got through this weather relatively unscathed. Again, I think it's that benefit of being underneath all of this evergreen growth. So if I can learn anything from this, it's to really utilise evergreens to create that canopy to protect these ground cover plants. Just here at the base of the Musa Basdu is an Australian brake fern, Teres umbrosa. Now these normally get completely frosted back in the slightest sign of cold weather and they'll regrow vigorously in spring. But so far, surprisingly, this has been evergreen in my garden. Now I don't believe that this has taken minus five. All of this area seems to be a really nice microclimate. And now that I know this, I can utilize this to plant some really half hardy um, and perhaps tender plants next year. And just by luck, this is where I left out a Begonia luxuriens, which I took cuttings off as a backup, but I've mulched around the base. And the chances of this coming back are slim, but you don't know until you experiment, so we'll wait and see. Now this fine example of a Begonia is one that featured recently in one of my YouTube shorts, it's Begonia Fusca. And I said that I'm leaving it out to experiment to see how hardy it is. Now, when I say that, by no means do I expect the leaves to survive cold weather. So this is to be expected. But what it's done is a natural defense. These leaves have been frosted, they've collapsed and they've fallen back and they're actually covering the pot that this is growing in. So these leaves are gonna act as a natural kind of fleece barrier to protect the rhizome and improve the chances of this plant reshooting again in spring when the conditions are right. So keep watching come spring and summer and we will see if Begonia fusca has any ability to survive cold weather. Now as I said this is growing in a pot because my garden is heavy clay soil. Um, that's not it, that's beautiful spent mushroom compost that I've used as a mulch. Um, but in this pot it should be protected from severe damp conditions. So let's wait and see on this one. Now, underneath this fleece was one of my prides and joy, Soncus fruticosus. Ta-da! Now, as I say, winters are a lesson for all of us. And I only protected this, this with fleece because it's planted into the ground. And it's such a shame because you can see there what looks like flower buds starting to emerge. Now, I'm hoping that this is only foliage damage because the stem is reasonably solid. The roots are in the ground, so even if I lose the stem, there's a chance that it could regrow from the base. So I'm gonna leave this where it is. I'm gonna keep the fleece over the top of it, and we will see how this reshoots in spring and summer, again, when the weather warms. Sometimes you can be really, really surprised by which plants can bounce back. 
Now this is the ultimate example of me sharing the true side of tropical style gardening in the UK or anywhere that has a cold winter for that matter. And it's really important to me that I share all of this with you, not just the beautiful summer pictures. This is Empatian's Oricoma cross bicordata, which is a Madagascan hybrid. And I recently did a video uh, that this featured in talking about overwintering plants without the need of a heated greenhouse. And this was a parent plant that I took cuttings and seeds from in anticipation of this happening. That's exactly why it's worth taking backup plants from any plants that you don't have the space to overwinter in a fancy heated greenhouse, because this might happen. Now again, this one has flopped well away from the base of the plant, so all I'm gonna do is grab it and sort of push it back into the bed and all of this plant material will break down over the course of winter and will feed the bed in summer and in that active growing season in a tropical style garden. Now my garden's not a show garden. I know I share it with all of you and I do like it to look nice, but I don't need it to be pristine all the time. This is nature's way. This is how it happens in a rainforest, how it happens in any forest, organic material, dies and falls to the forest floor and it is naturally worked back in and you get lush healthy growth. This one actually surprised me. This is Fatsia polycarpa and a cultivar called Green Fingers which has these beautiful deep cut leaves. Now this is sold to be as hardy maybe slightly less than the regular Fatsia japonica. It's a fantastic plant for a tropical style garden but even this with its thick waxy leaves at the very top of the plant has succumbed to frost damage and the leaves are scorched. But this is one of the plants that has demonstrated perfectly to me the benefit of microclimates and how some plants you might lose the very top of the plant, but it's okay. Other parts of the plant are happy and healthy. So look how brown the top of the plant is, but just a little bit down the stem, we have shoots coming out at the base. This little microclimate here is going to be so useful. All of that top growth has kept all of the bottom growth really, really healthy. Don't stress when part of your plant is stressed. Be patient and sometimes it will show you that it's okay. So it goes to show Fatio polycarpa is not as hardy as other Fatsias. Um, you might lose some of the top foliage, but it will get through winter, especially if the stem is okay. And this one has branched out really, really nicely. So this is not a worry for me. Come spring, I might chop this back and get rid of all of this burnt, damaged foliage and just enjoy all of the new growth at the bottom. Now, I say that the regular Fatsia is much tougher than Fatsia polycarpa. This is a variant of the regular Fatsia. This is Fatsia japonica variegata because it has these beautiful creamy white patches on the leaves. Now, I knew that often in plants, the variegated plant material can succumb to sunburn and it will go brown and crispy in sun. But this winter has taught me that that same material can burn in a cold frost as well. Now, variegated plant material is never as strong as the green material. So, yeah, it's a bit of a lesson for me there but it's really, really not that bad. Maybe three or four patches of burn, but the majority of the leaves have got through unscathed. And this one again looks sorry for itself. The leaves kind of crunch up and scrumple down, but it all perks up again as the day warms and it, it hasn't completely thawed out, but it gets to a higher temperature. Now, behind it there is a plant I actually forgot I had because it's just tucked at the back because I couldn't find anywhere to keep it. Melianthus major, and look, how pristine these leaves are. Now, this happens so often to me. The plants you forget about, the plants you're not giving any extra love to, are the ones that do best. And that's because I've just chucked the pot at the back here, where I've obviously chucked this spade that I've forgotten about as well. And underneath the canopy of this burnt iachroma, what was the Indian bean tree, it's a lovely warm microclimate. So. Maybe I'll be taking advantage of that next year as well. Maybe try and grow a tender climber up this post that divides my side of the garden from the dog's side of the garden. 
Now down the bottom, this lovely variegated grass is a chorus gramineus, and this is completely hardy. And I love it because it's so bright and lush, even with the conditions we've been having. But behind it is my farfugium, one of my favorite plants. Those of you who subscribe to the channel will know this. Um, and I've come out and many of the leaves look like this, completely frozen and curled up, but it's bounced back surprisingly well. Now, a few burn marks, again, on the variegated patches, just as with the fatsia, but overall unscathed and a really nice garden to have in a freezing temperatures. Really nice garden to have, really nice plant to have in your garden in these freezing temperatures, when everything else is looking a bit more like that. To have something still looking so interesting is a massive bonus. Now, just the other side of this garden path, is my Euphorbia cross pastorii and a cosphar called John Phillips, which is continuing to grow through these conditions. See all of these new leaves on the top everywhere? It's incredible because each morning I come out and the leaves are just hanging down like this with the one solitary new leaf poking up, but it thaws out and it bounces back and it's providing a really nice evergreen filler plant in the middle of the garden. This one is my purple sugar cane. Now there is no way that this is anything but tropical. That said, I chopped it back after the storms. We had experienced four degrees um, and I used some of the stems for propagation and it was still actively growing. So I think it's actually got a reasonable amount of cold tolerance. Whether it's gonna survive like freezing temperatures, we'll find out. Now I said in one of my YouTube shorts that I've left half of the above ground material on because all of this vegetative material is gonna help protect the roots that are under that layer of mulch, which is another way of protecting tender plant roots. I'm gonna leave this exactly as it is until spring. Um, and if it starts regrowing, I will lift it, divide it, and dot it around to the back of the borders because I wasn't really happy with where it was growing this year. But I'd love having the chance to experiment and find plants that might have a bit more hardiness than many publications or retailers actually tell you. Now just behind it is one of my favourite evergreens and it's a bit of a rarity. It's a Pseudopanax from New Zealand which has a beautiful thick waxy green leaf and that style of leaf is normally a telltale sign that it has a degree of res uh, resilience or resistance to cold temperatures. And this has stood up to the cold, but it's not got through without damage. I don't know if you can see on camera there, the leaves have a real tone of brown to them. So I think what's gonna happen, come spring, hopefully it will put out lots of new growth, maybe not from the damaged growing tips, but possibly from further down into the plant with all of that lovely woody growth. Remember what the word was? Lignified. So all of those lignified cells are gonna help protect all of the soft material inside. But it's still acting as a really beautiful evergreen backdrop, which is why I put this plant here. Next to it is another plant that I know a lot of you are stressing about in your gardens in this, in this weather. This is Schefflera taiwaniana, one of the hardiest Schefflera you can grow. And this one, every time I wake up and look out of the window, is sulking. It is frozen solid, the leaves are hanging almost straight down. But as this winter sun comes around and starts to warm the leaves slowly and steadily, it perks up. And so far, this does not have as much damage as that Pseudopanax does. So I'm hoping these leaves are much more cold tolerant um, because I'd hate to lose this plant. Unlike the other shrubs I've shown you, my Schefflera taiwaniana grows as a single stem plant. So it's not like I can lose one branch and then chop it back. Although I do think that if the top was damaged and I chopped it back, it would branch out and regrow. But again, it's giving absolutely beautiful evergreen structure to my winter tropical garden. And back here, which has been incredibly tough in this weather, considering how exposed it is. It's right at the top of the garden. It's my loquat tree, Ariobatria japonica, with these thick, 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 thick corrugated leaves. 
and it has just shrugged off the cold. It has had ice all over the leaves. Um, and I think because it's right at the top of the canopy, so these lovely blue skies and winter sun, it quickly thaws it out when we do have sun. Recently, it's been overcast all day and stayed really cold. But today it's looking nice. And I'm happy to say that the growing tips don't look damaged at all. So yeah, another great evergreen plant for height. One of my favorite trees for a tropical style garden. And I'd say actually any style of garden. It's something unusual that not everybody grows. Oh, it's so cold, I almost can't feel the tips of my fingers. Hopefully this video has made you realize that it's not just happening in your garden and that actually there's lots to learn and lots of experience to gain from this cold weather in any garden and especially in a tropical style garden. We get to see which plants thrive and which spots are best for the plants. Now, if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe if you haven't already and uh, leave a comment below. Either I will get back to you or somebody else that's watching this video. It is a great community we've got going here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.